If you've been keeping up with the NBA news this week, you would have seen the Denver Nuggets rising star, Michael Porter Jr., is out indefinitely after needing back surgery for the already third time in his young career. Now, I'm no medical expert, and I don't think you need to be one to realize that this is not a good thing. This isn't the only key player out for the Nuggets. Last season, they'll lose Jamal Murray from an ACL tear, and only a couple weeks ago, the backup guard PJ Dozier would unfortunately suffer an ACL tear too. So basically, it's not a good time to be an ACL in Denver right now. So with all these injuries, are the Denver Nuggets doomed? Could they still be championship contenders, let alone even make the playoffs? And should Denver fans be worried? We'll stick around to find out. So are the Denver Nuggets doomed? Well right now, even through all their troubles, the Denver Nuggets are currently sitting at a record of 10 and 10. Right down the middle, 50-50 split. They're sitting outside the top eight in the Western Conference. Now compare this to last season, at the same time, the Nuggets were sitting at a 12 and eight record. So yeah, the Nuggets record has regressed a little bit, but not too much considering what's happened. During last season, in that 20 game period, the big three of Michael Porter Jr., Jamal Murray, and Nikola Jokic missed a combined total of 11 games, which is a fair bit. However, this season, at the same time, using those same three players, they had missed a combined of 35 games out of the 20. That's three times more than the previous season, with five of those games having none of those guys line up at all. So sitting 10 at 10 right now, missing those players, is pretty good, and if anything, should be applauded. So who gets the credit for this? For me, there's two reasons. First, the Denver Nuggets support cast has greatly improved and has stepped up when called for. And secondly, they have the best player in the world in Nikola Jokic. So first of all, let's talk about the supporting cast. Who would have thought that in year 10, Will Barton would be making such big improvements? When Barton's been called upon this season, he has stepped up. He's currently averaging a so far career best 16.2 points per game to go along with a career high in assists with 4.3 and also shooting a career high percentage of 49%. Then you got Aaron Gordon, who was also making strides, picking up some of the offensive responsibilities, averaging around four more points than he did the season before, and is fitting into his role much better than he did last season. And how could I forget the rookie, Busy Bones Highland, who has impressed many so far in just his young NBA career that Michael Malone is forced to play a rookie, something usually unheard of. Now, would Denver take Murray and a healthy Michael Porter back if they could? Of course, but the player stepping up with us has really softened the blow. I mean, if any other team had lost two of the three key guys, they'd go straight into tank mode. But tank mode is not an option when you have a tank of your own in Nikola Jokic. Nikola Jokic is on a roll of his own, <laughs> literally. Taking his amazing MVP level play from the last season and upping it. Now, although he hasn't had an outstanding game from his standards, he's so far on track to have one of the most complete seasons in NBA history. As of recording this, he's averaging around 25.7 points, 13.8 rebounds, and 6 point assists, while currently having the highest ever PR in NBA history with 33.7. But we're only caught away through the season, so we'll slow down there. But his efficiency is literally off the charts, and we've never seen a player play like him before. He can affect the game in so many ways, and in any way he wants. It's in my belief, if he wants to put 50, he'll do it. If he wants to get 20 rebounds, try and stop him. If he wants to get a triple-double, you're almost better off sitting on the sideline, because he will get it. I mean, look at the plus-minuses. In the six games that Denver has lost with Jokic playing, he has a combined plus-minus of negative 14. You know what Denver's combined deficit is in those games? Minus 59 points. That's combined 45 points difference in how bad Nuggets are without him. And if you look further and look at the average margin of win slash loss without him, they lose by an average of 12.4 points per game. That would be enough for the worst in the league. So yeah, all of those guys have taken a step up during the season, it's quite evident that when Jokic isn't playing, you may as well write off the Nuggets too. So in saying all that, are Nuggets still contenders? Well, it really depends on a couple of things. One, if Jokic is playing, you'll always have a chance of winning. And if not, well, you better hope the ping pong balls go in your favor. The second thing is when Jamal Murray comes back from injury, if he does this season, how will he go? Because Jokic can probably easily carry this team to the playoffs. But to the finals, there's only so much he can do. And there's way too much talent in the top teams in the West that would make Denver struggle without a strong second option. So as much as a great player Jokic is, I can't really see Denver going far this season without a stand that second option. But this is just my opinion, and look, crazy things have happened in the NBA. Now I may have got a bit sidetracked here, but I really need to talk about Michael Porter's injury, and whether Nuggets fans should be worried. And right now, if I was a Denver fan, I wouldn't press the panic button just yet. The surgery that Michael Porter Jr. just had is lumbar spine surgery. Now doing a little bit of research, I found this article that says that the surgery is not major surgery. In fact, only keyhole. Patients typically spend one to three days in hospital. Physiotherapy can be started after three to four weeks with patients returning back to work within six. Now most of those patients, if any, are an NBA player who has multiple back surgeries already. 
But what this tells me is that the Nuggets don't want to waste max contract money on a player who could be riddled with lower back pain. If they pushed them through the pain, it could have possibly got it worse and turned into major surgery. They make him have the surgery now, why he isn't on the max money, and possibly rest and put him through rehabilitation, and prep him for next year, where he's on max money. Plus, the timeline for Murray to get back isn't exactly there yet, so I think the Nuggets are just playing it safe here. So after all this, are the Devon Nuggets doomed? Well, I don't think so, just yet. As long as the Nuggets have a 7 foot Serbian passing guard lining up for them day in day out, then of course, they're not doomed. But if he continues to have little injuries and has to sit out a few games here and there, the Nuggets could really struggle to a point where they pray that the ping pong balls fall in their favour. Plus, I have a feeling the Nuggets may have already unofficially marked this year as a write-off. Knowing that they won't have two of their three main pieces for the majority of the season, it doesn't seem like a bad time to focus on development. And that's why we're seeing the young fellas get a few more chances than what Michael Malone would want. I'm not saying the Denver Nuggets will quit, and especially Michael Malone at the helm, they won't. But when it comes to talent, outside those three-star plays, the Nuggets really do struggle and just won't be able to compete with the rest of the NBA, like most teams if they lose two of their three main options. But anyway, that's my thoughts on this situation. Like I've said plenty of times, any support would be greatly appreciated. And comment down below what you think of this Nuggets situation and what could happen for the team in the near or distant future. Cheers and have a good one.